The pathway overview is also to a certain extent tailored to represent things specific to the kind of organism you're in. So you'll notice here that we are in E. coli, so we're in a gram-negative bacterium, and we have a cell membrane, an outer membrane, and a paraplasmic space, and we can actually define things that are in these spaces. So if I go over to the right, you can see that we have th things living in the paraplasmic space. We have reactions, we have compounds, etc. And we actually even have some extracellular stuff. And now if I go back to the query page, and I select a different organism. So let's go down here and select Bacillus subtilis. And then I ask for the cellular overview diagram. Now we're looking at a gram-positive bug, and we have just the single cell membrane. And I'll also take a moment to point out here that now we're looking at a tier 3 database. So whereas EcoPsych is a tier 1 database, and you'll remember from the introductory webinar series that that means it's entirely literature derived, uh, Subtilis, like many, well really most of our databases, is tier 3, meaning that we've gone to the wealth of experimental information in MetaPsych, and we've used it to predict a metabolic network for this organism based off its annotated genome. And one of the consequences of this is that we aren't able to assign enzymes to certain reactions even though the whole pathway is predicted to exist. So if I pick something, let's go here. So if I pick this pathway here, which is formaldehyde assimilation, the cyclic formaldehyde assimilation pathway, then we can see that certain reactions are grayed out. And what that means is that we don't currently have an enzyme assigned to those reactions. And if I were to click on this and click through, and then go down on the page, we would actually have an evidence listing here that tells us, well, which things do we have enzymes assigned for? How sure are we about that? And we'll be talking more about this evidence glyph later when we look at our comparative genomics tools. But in the meantime, the thing to remember is We've predicted pathways. We can't always predict enzymes for every step in the pathway. And so when you see these grayed out lines, that means we haven't yet assigned an enzyme to that pathway. And maybe that's an opportunity, if you're working on this organism, to add a little bit more knowledge to what we already have. OK, so that's the basics of looking at the cellular overview diagram, how to use it. It's fairly straightforward. Remember, you can click through on basically everything. So you ought to be able to, one way or another, get to the proteins that carry out these reactions, or the pathway displays, or the compounds, or whatever. And now, moving on to part two, we're going to tell you how to combine this useful metabolic snapshot of the cell with your high throughput data, your expression data, your metabolomics data, your proteomics data, so that you can understand that high, high throughput data in the context of the cell's metabolism. And to do this, we're going to return once more to the Biosite query page. And we're going to go down here to the omics viewer. And that's where we'll pick up in part two.